Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Health In Show, an affiliate program of Homeopathy World Community, and I'm your host, Debbie Brooke, the founder of the social network Homeopathy World Community. Thank you to all of our returning viewers and our listeners. I hope that we have some groupies out there who will find our topics of interest and more important that what you learn here helps you in some way. And if you can, share this information with others. If this is your first time visiting the show, you need to meet our producer, Amnon Nissan, who is with us in the background. Hello. <laughs> Here's this little voice peeping up. And he is getting all the stage set, the lights, the sound twinkling like the stars in the sky. And I like to say hi to Amnon. Uh, during the week also, he, he might pop in with some personal stories, and he's always working to make the show better and better. Just go to Nissan Communications for your computer needs and listen to his regular talk show on this channel. So he's got a lot of shows going on during the week. We also encourage everyone to share the link with your friends on Twitter, Facebook, and emails, and on your blogs and web pages. We appreciate your involvement in the show through the comments right there. You can chat while we're talking. Give us some feedback. Call in via the Skype or the telephone number 919-518-9773 if you're in the United States. And Skype is Computers 2K Voice. The star of our show today is Dr. Deepak Sharma, our regular co-host who calls in from New Delhi, India, where he runs the Orbitz Clinics. He lectures widely on the subjects of community medicine and the practice of medicine. And during the week, I'm very fortunate to be able to speak with Dr. Sharma and learn the benefits of homeopathy through his successful case management. In, in 2010, Dr. Sharma was given the well-deserved Hahnemann Award by the Delhi government for his work and dedication in the field of medicine. Good, I want to say good morning, but for you, it's good evening, Dr. Sharma. Uh, good evening, Devi. Good evening, Amnon. Do you want to mention uh, the new project that you're working on today? Yes, uh, I am working on the role of uh, micronutrients during the treatment. So let's we we uh, will discuss about the micronutrients. That's the topic for today. I also, if you wish. I know you're working on a big, t a big program in uh, New Delhi. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's up to you if you uh, want to share. Yeah, I am also working on. Yes, we have uh, six doctors and almost nine students and ten technical staff that uh, running by the Orbit Clinics. We have seven branches and we are already working on the dream of a snake as I told earlier in the earlier show in the starting. Okay. So we're going to be learning from you uh, the experience of helping patients recover from surgery. And I'm wondering if that's going to include awakening from anesthesia in the incision, the wound, bruising and scar healing. And also, I'm thinking about emotional scars of surgery. Uh, will we be talking yes. about all of those things uh, in terms of vitamins and micronutrients today? Yes, we will talk about all the micronutrients. And they definitely use uh, by the uh, most of the surgeons nowadays. Okay, in the are you hearing time, him okay? The surgery is very fine, in which I just want to surgery. What is surgery? Everyone. Okay. The surgery is a part of medical. Okay, so we're, that, you're, you're uh, going to give us a depth. <clears throat> How are we going to um, help with the sound here? No. Okay, so we're. we're Give us it. To, you might. I might ask you to repeat a couple of times because we're getting a slow internet today, and um, so we want to know. People might be asking questions. I'll check also in the chat there. 
So you're going to start off with a definition of surgery. What is surgery when a person goes in there? Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, is it clear for now? It's okay. Okay. And uh, so I'm telling about the surgery. Basically, surgery is a science uh, is a branch of science that deal with the removal of abnormal part in the body or just repair the abnormal or fractured or dislocated part of the body like when we are when we are get a abnormal growth in the body we just uh, surgeons get removed it and when the bone is fractured or the structure of the body deformed then the, it will be correct by the surgery so uh, uh, everyone everyone is fear and have a fear about the surgery when we listen about the surgery and uh, he gets a fear that how will do with me how i get the uh, cut in my body how i feel uh, when i anesthetize uh, by the anesthesia and he wow. get a many fear before uh, performing a surgery except the emergencies so uh, there will be need of the supplements or the micronutrients in the body which uh, plays a very uh, good role in every uh, system so we can uh, we are calling the micronutrient because they are need in a very minute quantity they can you can get by the uh, diet or, the, or by the supplements also by in the form of capsule or in the form of tablet many of the uh, maximum number of vitamins are available in the market in the different form but the best way to consume the vitamins are the sources like green vegetables legumes milk egg or whatever you take in the diet except the junk food so so you're saying so, um yeah. we always would recommend that you speak to your physician to let them know what your plan is or if they have recommendations toward getting something over the counter as you say a capsule or a supplement or whether you prefer to get these micronutrients within the diet itself and does that mean a person is preparing for the surgery by doing these things ahead of time or is it ahead of time and after the surgery yes and uh, definitely actually uh, when we are uh, ready for the surgery the doses in the capsule form is already the option for a patient to get a exact doses of vitamins or the micronutrients the diet is a, when he takes in the diet it will may take some time to consume the vitamins in the proper form but when if anyone plan to surgery nowadays maximum number of surgeons are planned to uh, given a, a different type of vitamins or micronutrients before few days uh, before a few days of surgery performing a surgery and uh, many uh, i am just telling about the vitamins which vitamins are have effective role in post operative cases or performing uh, the role in the surgery Okay. now i am starting by the vitamin a vitamin a i am just ha yeah, vitamin a that is also called retinol vitamin a is helpful to uh, maintain the quality of epithelium of the eye epithelium is a thinnest layer of the eye it is very useful to maintain the equilibrium between the uh, vitreous fluid in the eye vitreous fluid is basically a fluid that maintain our vision in the eye so vitamin a is very helpful in uh, eye surgery eye, sur eye surgery okay eye surgery. And what about any so, other type of surgery would it be helpful for somebody to be taking vitamin a and yes. how do we know how much yes uh, actually vitamin a is a basically fat soluble vitamin the fat soluble vitamins are the vitamins which will uh, dissolve uh, with the uh, help of fat they are not dissolving in the water so they need a exact doses 
in a perfect prescriptions like perfect uh, vitamin vitamin a is also help in the bone surgery and sometime in the gastrointestinal surgery one of the research or uh, a, a study says that vitamin a is helpful when taking before two days of surgery and after three days follow following surgery is very helpful to initiate the healing process and reduce the uh, infection infections after the surgery so this vitamin a that we take as a supplement it's like um, an oil capsule um, and is it helpful to eat oils as well like olive oil or fish oil at the same time would that help the vitamin a to, to process properly no it will depend on the surgeon's requirement and every the most of the surgeons are checked the vitamin level before going to surgery especially in the gastrointestinal surgery the surgery in the abdomen most of the gastro surgeons will check the all levels of necessary vitamins before performing surgery if vitamin a is low then they will definitely give one in the capsule form or if it is maintained then give a extra diet so uh, to maintain the vitamin a and i know so i you mentioned retinol a is that part of it no um uh also i think about putting on topically vitamin e capsules after wounds are healing so is vitamin a only on internally or do we put it on externally as well yeah no vitamin a is not externally applicated vitamin a is uh, only internally uh, uh, intake by the capsule or by in the form of olive oil olive oil or fish oil okay all right so um and, and we are talking about the vitamin e this is the only vitamin on which there is no report uh, or no studies uh, showed in on any book. I never see uh, the effects of vitamin E after, in the post-operative cases or rather in the pre-operative cases. So I do not have any experience of vitamin E. And I just tried to uh, give any case vitamin E but there is no change. So you you, pers healing. you personally don't have any experience with the use of vitamin E, vitamin but e. I know that a lot of times um, for surgery afterwards, you're told to put an application. The physicians have told, like my daughter was in an accident and had a lot of scars to, and, mm -hmm. and women after pregnancy with stretch marks they are told to um, apply topically vitamin E, like opening the capsules and, and putting it on. So okay. I think it helps with scarring. It, it, it may help for, but vitamin A is uh, also good to reduce the scarring in the patients. So vitamin A is, A is very helpful, but I personally do not have any studies on vitamin E. I guess more in the that United I will try and in the United States, I think that they use vitamin E quite um, a lot in, in many instances. Are there okay. any any that, other that, vitamins? Yes. And now I am I'm going through the vitamin B complex. The vitamin B complex is a group of vitamin, including vitamin B1, that is thiamine, vitamin B6, that is um, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, that is cyanocobalamin, vitamin B2, this riboflavin, and this is a group of vitamin B complex. It is very essential vitamin and it is a type of water-soluble vitamin. Water-soluble vitamins are dissolved in the water and can absorb through the stomach or can absorb through the small intestines. The 
rather than the fat soluble vitamins are only absorbed in the small intestine or in the large intestine so vitamin b complex is very helpful in different kind of surgery i had a case of 28 year female that have a post operative neuralgia for 3 months she did not get relief by any of the medication but when i supplemented the vitamin b complex approx 1 ampoule per uh, intravenously 1 ampoule per day for 10 days the pain was gone only without any medication that was a nice case of vitamin b complex for the nerves the post neurological pain most of the time cured by the vitamin b complex supplement only when you say you gave vitamin b like in baby complex this included b1 and b12 and b6 those three specific vitamin b particulars because i i remember when i was doing chemo another friend was also undergoing it and and she had oh, i don't know whether it was daily or weekly regimens of intravenous vitamin b complex to support her and throughout her her time going through that ordeal she was flying on planes and doing meetings and workshops and just continued her normal life even though she was undergoing treatment so is this and obviously you have to go to a physician for this type of care yes yes actually i am we are working with the allopathic physicians also and when we are giving the doses or intravenous doses we are uh, uh, welcome to come in the physician and we we'll call to a physician allopathic physician to define the doses as the uh, my colleague defined about the doses for vitamin b complex that is 120 mg daily for the 10 days at least for the post neurologic pain it is very effective So this One is of, this is after surgery to deal with pain. Yes. During yes, the wound but, but healing. Yeah, but a blind control trial shows that when we are supplementing vitamin D complex in a, a few days before surgery and after days, after a few days of surgery, it will improve to uh, healing and uh, healing process and reduce the hospital acquired infections also. so that is very essential vitamin can, vitamin b complex can can you explain to me um is it an injection or is it an intravenous drip like a a line into the blood stream it is a, it is a intravenous injection it's just the one ampoule of in, uh, one ampoule of injection is equal to 120 mg of the dose it will direct inject into the uh, venous and sometimes intravenous but most most of the time it will introduce intravenously okay so these are these are really heavy duty things that people can do through the care of their physician uh what what else can we do is there something more in the in terms of going to your doctor or is there something at home that a person can choose to do no if if you are going to perform uh, Uh, performing a surgery the, uh, this is your right to every uh, surgeon that he will advise you the doses do not take uh, otherwise especially of the fat soluble vitamin because the fat soluble vitamin if you want in the excess it will cause the hypervitaminosis okay. like vitamin a vitamin e vitamin d and vitamin k are the fat soluble examples and it, the hyper and uh, doses can cause a damage but soluble cannot uh, be given in uh, cannot harm because they are water soluble and easily uh, excreted by the urine so vitamin uh, water soluble water soluble vitamins are, will not harm if they in, uh, they are in excess but fat soluble vitamins are, may harm so go through a physician or go through a, a surgeon to correct the doses and and i know that whenever you do go in for surgery you have to fill out all of these forms including the supplements the vitamins the drugs that you take 
before surgery, and your, your doctor may even say to get off of certain medications in order to go, undergo anesthesia and get through a surgery smoothly. So um, things like if I was taking a regular dose of fish oil, and that is also fat soluble, what, what would you say about that? Actually, the, fat, uh, the fish oil contain a minimum doses of vitamin A if you, if you are taking every day. So there is no need to harm, but the excess of doses are only uh, maintained by the over injection or overuse of drugs. It, is, it cannot be accessed by the fish oil or the any dietary supplement cannot cause the hypervitaminases. Hypervitaminases is always caused by the excess of the drug of, and drug taking. If you are taking without prescription, then it will be harmed. So it's okay on, in, on your on regular diet to continue with the fish oil because I know that the claims are that it has anti-inflammatory properties and also that it could help with the recovery time and to prevent infection during surgery. Yes, and the best source of vitamin B complex is the legumes. The green vegetables, green leafy vegetables are the best source of vitamin B complex. I had one experience with the vitamin B12 only. And a, one of the case of six year child that um, had a history of uh, in, uh, surgery in an intestine when he got a in very severe infection of the typhoid and it will complicate and gastrointestinal surgeon uh, did a surgery and cut a part of a small intestine. When he came to me, I just take a case and try many medicines by the homeopathic, by the totality of symptom, by the uh, personality basis, and by using the layer remedies. But it will, it never help. So when I studied about the uh, surgery, so I just check her, uh, his vitamin B12 levels in the blood, and the vitamin B12s are very less in amount. Then uh, this time I only gave the vitamin B12 in the intravenous, again intravenous uh, injection and it will continue for the 15 days, then on the alternate day and then on the uh, every week. And it will cure all the symptoms related to the GIT of his body. That was a case of vitamin B12. So the doctor should or you should ask your physician if you're going in for surgery to check the level of vitamin the B complex vitamin B12 and yeah. so that you know uh, this could actually boost your healing and your wound healing getting through uh, yes. pain also so that's really really good to know um, yes. so does that this cover case, the uh, uh, go ahead did you want to continue with the case Yes, and then when I discuss this case with the gastroenterologist, the gastroenterologist you know, are also shocked that why I did not check the vitamin B12 level, and he told about the truth about uh, truth of vitamin B12. When every person is going to perform a surgery, she sh she uh, can be in a shock that how I can get and the appetite was lost the heart and the patient's digestive system are work less appetite is less our acid is more then the vitamin b complex is deficient in those cases of stress so stress can uh, cause the vitamin b complex deficiency that is a very good uh, fact i know about uh, by a gastroenterologist and gastroenterologist show uh, explain about the vitamin b12 then i uh, studied about the vitamin b12 and it, the vitamin b is very less in the surgery and it it will be very necessary by the uh, necessary by the uh, many of the surgeon societies and they all perform the surgery with the vitamin b complex implementations 
That's really fascinating. So you're saying that a person's uh, potentially their balance of vitamin B in their body, in their system, which is so important uh, for the digestion, of feeling, uh, having an appetite and being able to digest food is so closely related to their stress level. And obviously, you're, if you're going to go for surgery, you're going to have some stress, as you started out to say. We have anticipation, anxiety, fears about undergoing the knife, about healing, about recovery, and therefore automatically we might see a drop in the vitamin B level. And that's a why we need to have it checked. So the relationship between our emotions and our feelings is involved with how well we heal. Therefore, we, besides taking vitamins and checking our levels, we have to think about, especially if you're a physician, about how to um, bring some calm and relaxation and confidence into that patient that things are going to go well. Uh, for instance, doing breathing exercises and uh, maybe slow movements and listening to music or whatever keeps the, the person feeling in a good state of uh, not in stress in low stress levels, I, I have a little quote, <laughs> I have a little quote here from Susie Bright that I found. It says, "Doing the right thing for someone else is like a tonic for me. It was like some magic ointment that made a wound disappear." And I thought that was quite beautiful because whenever we do things for other people. We also, ourselves, we feel much better about things and about ourselves. So um, I just wanted to bring that into the conversation. Did you want to talk yes. more about uh, the other vitamin, vitamin A? Yes, and yes. Moon? Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, the next vitamin we are discussing, the vitamin C. Vitamin C is also called a universal vitamin can be available in everything except the water. That is so-called the universal vitamin. It is also a kind of water-soluble vitamin and it is very necessary and it is very helpful to maintain the growth of epithelial cell, maintain our mucous membrane on the skin and, mem and to fight the in the skin so vitamin C is very necessary to maintain the epithelial layer either 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 in the kidney either in the heart either in the blood vessels vitamin C have a role everywhere in the body vitamin C is also uh, good to heal the epithelial layers the, the layers cut during the surgery and vitamin C uh, is also has a, is a very good study in the post-operative cases. Like one of the surgeons had a study of 12 patients and gave uh, them the vitamin C 500 milligram per day before five days of surgery and followed by the 10 days following the surgery. And it will uh, observe that healing is so much fast, and that is, this also in, reduce the level of hospital acquired infections also. So vitamin C is also a good uh, water soluble vitamin which will help in the post operative cases to maintain uh, because it maintains the mucous membrane and initiate the healing process. I think vitamin C is probably the most well-known of the vitamins. Uh, people take it for, for colds and to boost their immune system. And uh, plastic surgeons give it. And people who go in for emergency surgery for puncture wounds and gun wounds and all sorts of things, vitamin C is the most, it's true. Vitamin C is the, the yeah. most um, well-known of the vitamins to boost a person's immune system. And it is water soluble. It dis dissolves in water, and people walk around, you know, taking acerola berry. To um, you know, you, you it's it's a very common, and and you you think about it. You're taking it daily. Um, you put lemon in tea. Uh, you're getting your ascorbic acid. So 
Vitamin C yeah. is really, really important. And um, okay, we're going to take a look at the questions coming in. Also, is it in? Is it available in milk? I, I don't know that. I would have to yeah. research. You tell me. Is it in milk? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good question. Um, actually, I had the book on vitamins. If one book said by the, I think, Rigor Morton. Rigor Morton was the writer. Uh, he, he says, the, uh, you accept water. Vitamin C is available everywhere. So that is called the universal vitamin. Okay. And But when we are uh, searching the component of milk, there is no vitamin C available in the milk. Uh, when we are studying about the composition of milk, but okay. uh, it was a controversial, I think. Okay, so you're saying this is controversial whether vitamin C is in milk. Um, I wonder whether it depends upon what type of milk you're getting. We're going to have to. Um... Yeah, it may be possible uh, possible that vitamin C is. Uh, in other form can be uh, found in the milk, right. but I personally do not have information about this. I will get. Okay, okay we're going to research that. So, but vitamin C is really needed for growth and repair of tissues in all parts of your body. So you want to have that. And the question is, do we take vitamin C before surgery as well as after? Yes, actually the vitamin C is a water-soluble uh, vitamin, so there is uh, no need to think about the side effects of the vitamin. <laughs> yeah. You can take it, uh, it dissolve uh, in a water and it can easily exceed by the urine. So you do not worry about the doses of water-soluble vitamins, either vitamin C or either vitamin B complex. Mm -hmm. These are the water-soluble uh, take in the excess also. But vitamin C is very helpful. Vitamin C is also very helpful in the joint strain. Every time I had, uh, when I get a joint patient of joint pain, I will, uh, I uh, must supplement the vitamin C in the 500 milligram per day doses. Okay, and, and we also are very, very familiar with the fact that if you don't have vitamin C enough in your system, that you're prone to scurvy and that can happen anywhere around the world. And the recommendation for that is 30 milligrams a day for uh, vitamin C. We know this, definitely. Um, and also it helps breaking down any free radicals in the body when you're exposed to, um, let's say, radiation, which we now have all around us in our environment from not only the technology that we have and cell phones, but Fukushima, we are all dealing with this. And if you go in for x-rays for your surgery, another reason why vitamin C is going to be a helpful component for to help heal your body and clear those free radicals over time, which also is anti-aging. Um, and it plays a role in cancer, heart disease, and arthritis. In, in the chat, we do have a comment about the milk question. I agree with the person who is there talking about squid nip. It's not, um, milk is not really the best food nutritionally for humans after they have been finished breastfeeding. That um, it, it's not exactly the most natural. And the fact that most of our milk today is not raw, natural. It's It's gone through so many processes and so many things that we're not really getting a, a whole food. And the fact that it does, milk naturally has only trace amounts of vitamin C. Uh, we, we also have a question about Arnica, whether it's uh, used for surgery. This goes into the realm of homeopathy. Uh, we don't do a crude supplement of Arnica uh, ever. I know that you can yeah. actually buy it as a tea but it's not, um, that works with the heart and the blood, right, Dr. Sharma? So if you're yes. taking an yes. anticoagulant, um, some some uh, kind of drug, you have to be very careful. Yes, uh, there is a good uh, for uh, Debbie, that when we are uh, talking here about the supplements only, 
but i will answer i want to give an answer on the question can arnica be used before surgery i say no no never because arnica is a purely vasodilator medicine it can dilate the vessels it can give the uh, surgeons to go in the shock when the bleeding is more or it can bleed uh, the patient will bleed more after the surgery that is a, a bad effect of arnica if you uh, read for the farrington matter medica the comparative matter medica of farrington he clearly says arnica is a vasodilator never given in the cut injuries it is best action uh, of the arnica is in the blind wound blind uh, wound of the uh, there is no cut when uh, we use the arnica so i say there is uh, you cannot use the arnica before surgery right and and we typically think of the use of arnica when someone has a black and blue a bump a bruise which helps the flow of blood to clear the area of clots so if you're having a flow of the blood in your system it's going to be more difficult during surgery to stop the bleeding and that's a good reason why you don't really want to do the arnica before but after you do want that cleansing effect and opening the heart. I, am I on track there, Dr. Sharma? Uh, yes, uh, but I, did. I uh, always advise that Arnica can be used after 24 or 48 hours of the surgery. Okay, so when you the have healing, to wait. When, when the healing starts and the bleeding was stopped, then you can give the Arnica. Okay, so we're going to do another show that covers the um, homeopathic remedies before and after surgery so we surgery. know about what to deal with when um, there's anesthesia and how to get the person to come back to their normal state or to help with the wound healing itself um, diff there are many many different things that are available homeopathically so i, I think we answered the question about vitamin e uh, vitamin E was, yes, um, you can put it on the skin with your doctor's approval, and that does help with scars, definitely. Um, the next question you have is about vitamin K injections to promote healing before yes. or after surgery. So, um, yes. check, what do you have to say about that? Yes, I will really come to the vitamin K. Vitamin K is very helpful vitamin in the clotting system. Vitamin K stop the medicine, uh, stop the bleeding. Sorry, stop the bleeding uh, and clot uh, and form a clot around the arteries, around the capillaries, and it is very helpful to close the um, cut off arteries. So vitamin K is also necessary to check. Uh, before going to surgery, vitamin K supplementation has to initiate the healing process and it will give a, he a healing before then the normal time. Like when you, uh, when you have a cut, vitamin K helps to close down the arteries cut by the surgeon. So vitamin K is very helpful. Yes, I think we think about vitamin K as being a new vitamin, one that we don't think of quite often. Um, so vitamin K, vitamin K is not a new vitamin. Vitamin K actually is not available in the diet directly. Okay. It's not so vitamin available K by is, the diet. So how do we get the vitamin K and where, where does it come from? Uh, vitamin K is all, uh, synthesized and in the active form of vitamin K is only generated from the liver. And the substance which will in, uh, initiate and in, uh, convert into vitamin K is uh, you can got from the legumes and green vegetables also. And sometimes the sun rays will help to initiate the process of vitamin D and vitamin K also. One of uh, the another reason of the initiation of vitamin K is the kidney. 
a few part of the kidney initiate the process to uh, convert a, a substance into vitamin K by the liver and kidney. So vitamin K is synthesized in the body only. You can take it by the capsule or by the form by the form of uh, any other tablets, but you cannot uh, say directly intake by the diet. So you must uh, be in the prescription of a physician or a surgeon because it is again a fat soluble vitamin. Okay, it's another fat soluble vitamin. I I'm just curious, and I don't know if you have the answer to this question. All of these fat soluble vitamins do they work together in the the fat globules of our body i mean is there some sort of a synesthetic some sort of a um harmony between them that there's a balance or we need all of them obviously and we're kind of i i would assume we're kind of guessing to the exact amount but our body regulates it I, I'm just explaining what uh, about the hair soluble and water soluble again. Okay. Actually, the water water soluble vitamins are those vitamins which are very easily dissolved in a molecule with a molecule of a water. They okay. can absorb either by the stomach only or either by the small intestine. They can absorb easily by the mixing of water only, but the fat soluble vitamins are uh, cannot be absorbed by the stomach it will digest by the small intestine and may absorb by the large intestine or if in a, or a few part of the small intestine and then part of large intestine so fat soluble vitamins are difficult to absorb remember this they're difficult Water -soluble to absorb so which means that um, our liver and our gallbladder must be working properly in order for us to utilize these vitamins. Uh, sorry, pardon? Uh, our liver and our gallbladder must be working properly in order to utilize these vitamins when we take them as a supplement. Especially for the fat-soluble vitamin the gallbladder, the bile charts, bile pigment, and the pancreatic juice uh -huh. have, a, have, a, have a enzyme to dissolve the fat. So uh, your pancreas or liver will be good to absorb the fat-soluble vitamin. Okay. Um, are there other vitamins that we should know about? So not. the more important vitamin is vitamin D. This is also a fat soluble vitamin. Vitamin and B again, like vitamin B like in baby or vitamin D like in dog? Everyone. Everyone. Vitamin D is again synthesis in the body and you can take by the supplementation of milk. The chemical name of vitamin D is calciferol. It is a type of vitamin D or vitamin D2 or vitamin D3. There are more types of vitamin D, uh, but we are not discussing about the types because this is a very lengthy topic. The common type of vitamin D is vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Okay. D2 and D2, D2 and D3. And this would, this I assume would come from our milk, from our dairy. Is that yes, right? Um, I, 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 and yes, I'm just explaining about the fact. Actually, the vitamin D is only synthesized in the body by the help of sun rays. Okay. The, uh, a few enzymes found in the skin initiate the process and vitamin D2 D2 is converted, uh, the substance is converted in vitamin D2 in the liver and kidney again like the vitamin K. But in the US, uh, the sun rays are very harmful. They uh, uh, they are saying that sun rays may cause the cancer. Okay, so our, our sound By is coming in and out. Um, so uh, so, so yes. many of the people in the US, I think, 
Okay, so, so he was saying about vitamin D um, is manufactured within the body after we get a certain amount of sun each day, which is a, a very important requirement for keeping our health, and that vitamin D, D is synthesized from our interaction with the sun. Um, was what else? Oh, and and he was and you were saying how many physicians are telling us to be careful about getting out into the sun due to too much exposure, possibly um, getting skin cancer or other kind of cancer. Where I personally uh, say, get your sun, just do it in the morning hours, in the uh, later day hours, and not full sun at noon. Um, and, and don't stand out there for hours on end until you're burned. But otherwise, we, we absolutely need our sun. So what were you saying? Yes, well, I am. Here in India, I am always advised that you must take a sun exposure at least for 20 minutes and before 9 a.m. in the morning. That is the best sun exposure. It cannot harm your skin. It cannot harm your body or it cannot tanning the skin though so uh, before 9 a.m it, is, it will be better to expose the skin in the sun rays sunlight at least for 20 minutes vitamin d is more much and much helpful to uh, calcium transport system and it is very necessary to our bones many of the elements have uh, Deficiency and deficiency of vitamin D and, uh, in the menopausal age or in right. the anemic phase. So vitamin D is very necessary and it will always check by the every surgeon before doing a surgery. Especially okay, so, so we have to we have to check our vitamin D level also. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I, I usually D3. think go ahead. Yeah, vitamin D3 is always be checked in every woman every year after the menopause. It is very necessary and uh, it will be advisable to every person that uh, he will uh, check the vitamin D3 levels at least in a year because the bone health is always depend on the vitamin D and calcium level. And most of this uh, orthopedic surgeon those are performing the surgeries of bones or always use the vitamin d okay. before and surgery and after a long time of surgery and they will become the daily doses of vitamin d is necessary for everyone that was very helpful so when a person breaks their bone or has some sort of arthritic condition and they're having um, knee replacement or something then the bones in order to support the bones they do need the vitamin c they do need the sunlight but i have a question because very often um, a patient is given antibiotics before and during surgery to prevent infection and certain drugs do not interact well with the sun and so the patient is told to stay out of the sunlight due to the drug interactions. Um, are you familiar with this? And would you say vitamin D supplements would take the place of going outside or, or how would you consider? Yes, yes. Uh, in those cases, we are uh, just perform, uh, given a dose of uh, calcium vitamin D from the outside by the, you know, in the form of tablet. And I, but I always say that if you have an exposure of sun, you may get rid of many diseases. Many studies say the sun exposure will uh, help to reduce the infection, the common infections like sore throat, like, like allergic rhinitis, and like mild headaches, or also uh, cured by the exposure of sun. So it, it is very necessary to take it some. And, and I think about if um, I have a wound or a, a wound that is there that maybe is moist or something, that getting it out into the sunlight to dry it up, and just like for people who have psoriasis or eczema, getting out into the sun is so helpful to heal the skin. So is, it, is that gonna help 
the entire layers of skin tissue by getting out into yes. the sun? Actually, the, most of the infections are, are uh, caused by the Staphylococcus aureus. This is the bacteria commonly found in the every environment. Can, you cannot uh, get, go away from this bacteria. It founds everywhere in the earth. So okay. Staphylococcus is the most common bacteria found in every part of the world, every, on the whole earth. And it, all, it only destroyed by the sun exposure. Okay, yeah, so, so so like event, like for uh, MRSA, uh, MRSA, which is a staff now that is so resistant to to any kind of antibiotics, um, we need our sunlight. It's so important for our overall health, immune boosting, and wound healing, uh, just to get that sunlight. So I think that yes. um, I don't know how a person would. Um, Maybe when they get the surgery and they're taking the antibiotics only a short period of time and then they get out in the sun afterwards. Because it can be a very fearful type of, if you're a patient, you could be kind of scared of going outside if you think there's going to be some interaction between the sun and yourself by taking a certain antibiotic or a certain drug. Yes, uh, I just want to say one thing about the sun exposure. In the ancient time, everyone uh, says, everyone of, uh, uh, as already our parents also says, that when you may make a building or when you make uh, your own home, your home, uh, your doors will be towards the eastern side. That is a fact. And uh, the, the reason behind it, when you get a morning sun exposure, you will get rid of the staphylococcus infection and you will get the less infections you will have the good immunity Those so did you say face, face your body toward the east did you say that no did, what did you yes. say yes yeah, facing face, facing of your house or your yes we do work. always we pray this way <laughs> yeah. we face the east <laughs> It's a good idea. Good you know, prayer prayer is an important part of, I mean, the highest form of healing, if you can absorb that yes. one. So um, yes. that's yes. great. And, you know, does, does a prayer come in pill form? I think it's up to yes. us to, to, to mouth the words and bring it into our heart. Um, we have quite a few more um, potentially helpful vitamins and micronutrients and yet we have maybe uh two minutes left of the show because i do want to close up with some thank you yes. thank you and yes. other things so um <laughs> what what is happening no no Pray. no man no, 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 i am oh, just telling the name of vitamin g yes, sorry, sorry. oh yeah i like that okay victor thank you so much vitamin g uh oh gee yeah. <laughs> uh, OMG. O -M -O -M -G. <laughs> <laughs> good. So. And we, we have pre prelinite, prelinum. That's my, my, <laughs> okay, we're going to, we're going to close the show today on this high note. And, and if, if folks want to learn more about, um, more micronutrients and vitamins and surgery we're going to uh, do another show about it we will definitely do a show about homeopathic remedies and pre and post surgery um also because we have a whole list of those i want to thank you dr sharma for preparing today's uh session uh talking about these special things that we can speak to our physician about to know that we we feel comfortable, reduce stress, and, and help our bodies. I also want to mention um, all of the other shows that we have been doing. So we're into, is this, we're going to be finishing up the second month of programming for the Health In Show. Uh, we talked about, we started off with snakes, and you even mentioned that today on Dreams of Snakes, and we did part two of Dreams of Snakes. We, we had a special guest, Peter Morell, um, from the UK, a medical historian, 
talk about the foundation of homeopathy with Dr. Hahnemann and how, what kind of thing, as a physician in his day, what he had to deal with and the, probably the types of surgeries he saw, very dramatic surgeries and people dying without knowing about all these vitamins. And then we had uh, a special show on April 16th um, dealing with World Homeopathy Awareness Week. And that was a lot of fun. Go back and listen to it if you'd like. And, and then Dr. Isaac Golden, who will return again in the future, he talked about prevention and prophylaxis of endemic infectious and contagious disease. On April 30th, we, had, we started to talk about fertility and infertility in women, a very uh, big issue today. Um, <laughs> my, my phone is ringing. Um, and because our environment has changed our interaction with our hormones and in our relationship to the world and our food. So that is an excellent show to watch. And last time we saw, talked about uh, the symptoms of during pregnancy. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, if you have any topics that you would like us to talk about, send in comments and send in feedback. Let us know how you're enjoying these shows. Um, share them. I, I think Dr. Sharma must have had to run to his no, he's, he's, he's still there. You know, he works late into the night and he still has his patients either listening into the show or waiting to be seen by him. Uh, so we thank you. And next week, we're going to have Dr. Tony Bark talk about the whooping cough epidemic, which is really coming along here in the United States. I don't know how, I'm not joking with his cough. Um, <laughs> Dr. Sharma, is there an, any kind of uh, whooping cough in your area in India? Yes, it is, but not exactly the whooping cough. There is the allergic cough is the more common in India. Okay. And the seasonal allergy can be, but not as a whooping cough, except the rural cases. I uh, have a bad experience with the cough and homeopathy. Okay. So, so, <laughs> cough, so those are just um, different types of coughs, and we're going to be um, talking specifically about this epidemic. And um, for those who are interested in the heal, the wound healing. There's a link on the Homeopathy World community page about the scar cream from Miranda Castro. And um, we just want to thank everybody for tuning in and sharing. And Amnon, I think we, we got a little bit of interest, a little interest today. We, we want to make it down to earth. And uh, yeah. yeah, okay. So that's it for today. I want to thank everyone. In thank health. You. Thank you. And we love you, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much. You are tuned to the yeah, Nissan Communications Network. Okay.